So now that we've got the Hyperview role installed, our next step is to configure virtual switches. Now, remember when we did the install, we had the option to create an external switch and specify the Ethernet adapter it was going to use. But I specifically didn't do that because I wanted to walk through this process so you could see it. So we're going to go to Tools from Server Manager, and we're going to choose Hyper-V Manager. And from the Hyper-V Management Console, we're going to go to our Virtual Switch Manager right here. So select our virtual switch manager, and because we didn't tell it to create one, we have them defined. So this shows us our three types of switches. We can have an external switch, an internal switch, and a private switch. Now, an external switch will allow connectivity to the outside network. And you'll see the definition here, right? It creates a virtual switch that binds to the physical network adapter so that the virtual machines can access the physical network. If you're going to have these virtual machines accessible from clients or anything else out to the world to connect to the internet, whatever, they need to have an external switch. And when they have that external switch, you'll pick a physical adapter, and then that will be like the uplink port to the rest of the world. Now, before we do that, that's what we're going to do here in a minute. But before we do that, let's look at internal and private switches as well. An internal switch can only be used by virtual machines that run on the physical computer and between the virtual machines and the physical computer. So basically, this is isolated. Virtual machines that are connected to the switch can talk to each other. They can talk to the physical computer, but they can't talk beyond that. And we'll use this sometimes for isolated testing environments. Now, a private virtual switch is very similar to an internal virtual switch with one caveat. The private virtual switch can be used by virtual machines that are connected to it and only by those. It can't be connected to, those machines cannot connect to the physical computer. So if you want something completely isolated, you want to use a private switch. Now you can actually create more than one switch. So I can create two different private switches. And if you know all of my machines that are connected to private switch number one can talk to each other, all of my machines that are connected to private switch number two can talk to each other, but a machine on private switch one can't talk to a machine on private switch two and vice versa. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's go to our external switch, because this is the one we're actually going to create. So I'm going to click Create Virtual Switch, and I'm going to give it a name, and being very creative, I'm going to call this External Switch. Very creative name, right? Add any notes that we want. And this kind of cracks me up. They will actually let you switch it here from an external to an internal to a private. It's the same thing if you choose a private or an internal. It still brings you to the same page. So now I'm going to pick my external network adapter. Now if I've got more than one network adapter in my server, I want to pick the one that I'm going to use for this. So you want to have planned out beforehand how am I going to use these different I uh, these different Ethernet adapters. And again, you can create more than one external switch, right? So I can have external switch number one using one Ethernet adapter, external switch number two using a different Ethernet adapter, so that all of my traffic isn't coming in just on to my virtual machines, isn't coming in off of just that one Ethernet adapter. And I can connect some switches or some VMs to external switch one, some to external switch two. Okay. Once I select my Ethernet adapter, which we hit the drop down, and I only have one in this thing. So then I've got two other options here. Allow management operating system to share this network adapter. If you don't, then that can only be used for the virtual machines. So in this case, I have a single Ethernet adapter. If I leave this checked, what will happen is my host operating system won't have a network connection at all because this Ethernet adapter will be used exclusively for VMs. So let me rephrase that if I uncheck that. Now in this case, I do want to enable this to continue to be used with my host operating system, so I want to leave that checked. Now the other option here is single root I.O. virtualization. If your physical adapter supports single root IO virtualization, then you want to enable that because it it simple or it doesn't simplify, it smooths out. Let's use that terminology. It smooths out connections to different virtual machines. It allows the switch or the Ethernet adapter hardware to redirect things to the right virtual machine. So it actually 
smooths out your network communications, makes them a little more efficient. Now, the last option here. Oh, and please note this can only be configured when the virtual switch is created. You can't change it later. So, uh, last thing here, enable VLAN identification for the management operating system. Now, this is if you are using uh, VLANs in your physical network. So, if you do, then you're going to want, if you want to use this, then what you can do is you can have different virtual machines can use different VLAN identifiers for their network connections. Which means, by the way, that this machine has to be plugged in your physical computer, has to be plugged into a trunk port. So you have that VLAN tagging. And then you can specify which VLAN ID is going to be used for the management adapter. Now, if you're not using VLANs, then you just leave that unchecked. All right, I'm going to click Apply. Now, this is going to the... Uh, Hyper-V switch is going to seize control of my Ethernet adapter, which means I'm temporarily going to lose network connectivity. And since I'm connected to this thing over a network, you can see up here I'm using the uh, remote desktop client to connect to it. I'm actually going to drop my connection temporarily. Now, this is a temporary drop while uh, Windows Server reconfigures its networking. So it's not permanent. I'm not going to lose things forever. It's just going to drop temporarily and then it will come back up. There it goes. Boy, it took a while to drop that, didn't it? But Hyper-V, or not Hyper-V, the remote desktop client is going to automatically try to reconnect for me. And there it goes. We're back up. So you see that went down and came back up. I hit OK. And I now have a virtual switch. Now, the only way I know I have a virtual switch is by going back to my virtual switch manager. And right here, you'll see our external switch. Now, I can make some changes, right? I can change uh, the VLAN or enable the VLAN. I can change the VLAN ID. Um, I can even reconfigure which kind it is. But notice that my single root IO virtualization has been disabled. I can't change that. I can also then create additional virtual switches here if I want to. Okay, there we go. That's how you configure a virtual switch in Hyper-V.